Welcome to pre-pogo. Six A and six B. We will be studying chemical reactions. In particular, there will be the free radical halogenation reaction. Your learning objectives will include um, being able to uh, draw reactions, draw the um, generation of um, anions, uh, cations, and free radicals. Now what these are are intermediates. So we're going to be able to, we're going to draw those intermediates. That's one. And we're going to be able to classify them. Number two, um, you need to be able to um, label a reaction energy diagram. So we'll look at a reaction energy diagram and we'll label that. And then the third learning objective will be able to um, predict slash draw the products um, products from a um, free radical reaction, from a free radical halogenation reaction. And then I want you to also be able to draw the reaction mechanism. So this will be our introduction into a reaction mechanism. And you'll um, see that that requires an initiation step plus a propagation step. And then we'll have your um, pre-pogal activities. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about reactive intermediates. So I'm going to give you uh, three examples. And so we have this uh, carbon here. This is called a carbo cation. And this carbon here would be a carbo anion. Sometimes this is called a cation. Instead of a carbocation, this is called an anion or a carboanion because of carbon. And then um, you can have something like this, which is a free radical carbon. Now, if you count how many electrons the carbocation has, that carbon, how many valence electrons it has, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. So this has six valence electrons. Uh, the carbon anion has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. And then the free radical has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. So if we remember that there's the octet rule, we would learn that um, the carbocation is electron deficient, and so is the free radical carbo, uh, free radical is electron deficient. And so what does this mean? This means that um, the stability, and you'll have to rank the stability of carbocations and free radicals in chapter four, and then in chapter six, they're gonna be very important. And the more stable are gonna be the more substituted. So if you have a carbo cation that is like this, will be more so stable than this one, than um, this carbon here. Um, so what are these rankings? So this carbon is bonded to one, two, three carbons, so that's a tertiary carbocation. 
this carbon, this the carbocation, is bonded to two carbons, so that's a secondary. And this carbo um, cation here is only bonded to one carbon, so it's a primary. Now, um, these methyl groups here that we're counting are electron donating groups. And electron donating groups donate electrons towards that reactive intermediate. This stabilizes um, an electron deficient center. The same thing happens with a free radical. Since a free radical is electron deficient, you're going to deal with a tertiary free radical is going to be more stable than a secondary and then a primary. And when we say more stable, we're talking about thermodynamically more stable. So we're talking about a delta H. And we'll talk about that in the um, energy diagram. So um, carboanions would follow the opposite pattern where your methyls and your primaries would be actually more stable than a secondary and tertiary. So they do opposite. Now, how do these get generated? Well, there's a thing called a homolytic cleavage. And there's a heterolytic. Now, you've done a heterolytic cleavage when you did acid-base reactions. And that's more common. So let me show you the difference. So if we're going to generate... If, okay, so the, let's say this bromine leaves and these two electrons in this bond here split up and one of the electrons goes with the carbon and let's keep in mind that bromine has three lone pairs here and then the other electron goes Um, with the bromine. Okay. No, that's not right. Let me erase that. Sorry. That's not the eraser. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right. That is my eraser now. All right. So what happens is bromine um has one, two, three, four, five, six, and now it has that seven. Okay, so you see that this is neutral. These are neutral, this is neutral. Um, you've generated two free radicals here, okay? Um, this is a secondary. Do you see that this is a secondary um, carbo radical? Okay, so that's a carbon carbon radical, secondary, because that carbon there, that's the free radical, is bonded to two carbons. Now you see these fish hook arrows, they're called fish hook arrows, and they're showing the movement of one electron. So one electron goes with bromine and the other one goes with the carbon. And that is an example of homolytic cleavage. Homolytic, it splits equally. Homolytic, okay? Now an example of heterolytic cleavage would be, let's put our electrons in here. Um, this compound, what's it called? It's called uh, bromocyclopentane. Now if both these electrons go with bromine, you see how we have a double-headed arrow? And this is what you're used to, because you did this with acid-base chemistry. Then you have let's go ahead and give bromine its lone pairs so we can count for all the electrons. Now both red electrons have gone with the bromine, and that makes bromine negative charge and this generates a carbo cation. And it is secondary as well because that carbon is bonded to two carbons. So that's a secondary carbocation. 
and that is a result from a homolytic cleavage. These are reactive intermediates. So in a reaction energy diagram that you're going to have to be able to draw, energy is on the y-axis and reaction coordinates. I don't, I've never known what that meant. It just means the flow of the reaction and the direction. Usually you get something like this, where this is your starting material. Okay, I'll just put SM for starting material. And then, it, and this might be um, correlate to maybe like 10 kilojoules. Okay, so we'll just say 10 kilojoules there. And then you have to go over a big,